Hello and welcome to another edition of the wrap up the Raptors Republic live post game show where we are currently streaming on Twitch and we'll have this uploaded to YouTube as soon as it's done where the Toronto Raptors just beat the Miami Heat in triple overtime by a score of 124 to 120 in what was one of the best regular season games we've seen in quite a while. I'm Warren Weisfeld, and with me today, we have a special guest who's usually behind the scenes. He stepped in front of the camera and the microphone today, Mr. Don Yang. How you, how you feeling, first of all, Don, about doing doing uh, this in front of the camera for the first time on this game? It's, it's a great feeling because, I don't know, we've seen this a lot in the NBA this season, uh, replacements, you know, they get signed with 10-day contracts with a right. lot of COVID protocols i I feel like you know that's how i that's what my situation is right now and what a game to be on yeah you're you're more like one of the coaches coming coming (laughs) off the sideline and like nick nurse you're stepping onto the floor you're just gonna shoot some threes for us today oh yeah that kind of deal but yeah uh crazy fucking game not don't even know really it's hard to figure out where to start with this one but the raptors outlast the heat uh despite playing five players Uh, for the majority of the game and all of it was the first time in NBA or shot clock history that you know five different players played more than 50 minutes in a game which all the Raptors did they all played more than 53 minutes in a game let's let's just start there I mean what did you think about the performance by the the big five or the Raptors five as I'm calling them the new biggest boy band out of Toronto because that's really all we got right now. But what did you think about this performance from those five? I think this was one of the best team played game uh, this season. Well, up mm-hmm. up until the fourth quarter, actually, because fourth quarter is a little messy. But the first three quarters and the overtimes, like the best players were doing, like best players thing, hitting clutch shots, playing great defense. By the way, shout out to Pascal Siakam. I think he played like the best defense. I've ever seen from him. Yeah. Or any anyone from this season. And yeah, yeah. It's, especially like in o, in the OT when like Evans legs were all al dante spaghetti noodles <laughs> and Siakam steps up like that and like you know remember those two blocks on Dream Butler. I don't think that was an OT but still yeah, crazy game from Pascal and others. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh honestly like it gave me flashbacks to Kawhi performances because Kawhi was that guy who could lock in in a playoff game on defense and like you couldn't really get by him when he did that. And I think honestly, both Siakam and OG were that level of playoff Kawhi locked in tonight on the defensive end, at least in the second half and in the three overtime quarters. Like those two were just insane and in very different roles. O- OG obviously checking Jimmy Butler, who was the only guy who had it for the Heat tonight on a consistent basis. And once the overtime started, he was really struggling to score. And obviously, they were sending multiple bodies, but OG was primarily the guy who was stopping him. And then Siaka more so as like a low man help defender, who I think has gotten a lot better over these past couple of years as as a rim protector. We obviously saw the, those two blocks on Jimmy that he had there. But yeah, what do you what do you think about Pascal kind of just? Being like playing kind of the center on defense, like he did a lot today, um, despite kind of his his lack of size guarding that position. How, how do you think he's been? I think well, disclaimer before I say anything because we're not going to play any highlight clips, yeah. so we we apologize for that. Um, yeah, but for Pascal with his defense, it was kind of amazing that we are uh, Miami does have a traditional center. Well, he's not really traditional, but he's a almost a seven footer in Bam Adebayo. So yeah. I think the Raptors as a team played good defense on him to uh, uh, in the paint to kick the ball out, uh, maybe and not make him uh, dominate in the paint. So I don't think it's just on Pascal that the Raptors played good uh, like man to man defense. Uh, but I don't know, like, I think this season he's been playing uh, great defense for uh, consistently, I, I feel like. Don't you mm-hmm. agree with that? Yeah, for sure. I think he started a little slow when he got back from injury, but these last like these last 20 or so games from him, like honestly, this is the best I've seen him on both ends of the floor, I would say, just in terms of 
defensively, like I kind of said, that the the rim protection has definitely taken a step up for where it used to be. He's kind of learned that role really well. And then offensively, everyone's kind of talked about it, but the playmaking, the isolation scoring today, he, he went, basically they were attacking Tyler hero all night and he was having a lot of success with it until overtime, which I think the Raptors just like, I guess they got tired in overtime because their offense kind of did fall apart and they were really struggling. Was there anything you noticed in overtime in terms of the offense that was like maybe pissing you off a little bit or. Was it just a matter of like these guys are tired and it's kind yeah, of hard to criticize? Definitely, I can't really say anything when they all played fifty plus minutes. Yeah, um, yeah, but I think Tyler Hero. We actually uh, let Tyler Hero shoot a lot of pretty good open looks uh, down to clutch time, but yeah, he fortunately missed. Yeah, that was that was like. Honestly, being a Raptors fan, you're so used to the worst thing happening. Mm-hmm. But Hero, Hero had two different in and outs on big threes yeah. in triple overtime, and that when those happened, I was just like, "Wow, our luck has finally turned! Like uh, <laughs> the ceiling is the roof." Man, the, they the deserve Raptors. it. They yeah. deserve it. <laughs> this game, they, especially. Absolutely, especially but, like uh, the fa- considering that starting on Monday, the Raptors have four games in five nights mm-hmm. against good teams, so they really knew it needed this. Yeah, but shout out to Miami because this is their this was their second night of back to back, and they played like Jimmy played fifty plus minutes too, and yeah, good fight overall. And yeah, here's, yeah, the this teams, is the crazy schedule. These two teams remind me a lot of each other, um, mm-hmm. other than like I would say the difference, and this goes back to like what I've been arguing, and I actually want to ask you about when it comes to the trade deadline. Like the Raptors have these five really good players. And the reason I've been pushing so hard for them to be to go in and be aggressive and try to make a playoff push is because I believe that these five players are like legitimately good playoff contention worthy five guys. And I think the Heat have a very similar team identity. They both play extremely hard defensive teams, physical teams, but the Heat have, you know, 10, 11, 12 guys on that bench who can shoot and who can really play off the bench. Whereas the Raptors, as we saw today, like literally look at the box score, literally five guys. The rest of them played like 16 minutes at the mm-hmm. most, I think, for Precious. So, yeah, I guess you've obviously heard me talk quite a bit about how I think this team is is actually really good. They just need a little more depth and, and a, to plug a couple holes. Where are you at with the Raptors in terms of, do you think that they should kind of be aggressive this year and, and give those five guys like a better chance? Or do you think that, as a lot of people do and have pushed back on my idea that maybe just like one more year of kind of rebuilding and then kind of go for it next season. Well, I think regardless, you need a, another rotational player that plays at least 20 minutes <laughs> because right now, four out of top 12 minutes per game are Raptor, uh, you know, just Fred, yeah. Pascal, OG and Scotty. And obviously Fred leads the league. So, and it's not just about winning. I just feel like the fatigue issue is going to hit them like in a negative way later in the season when maybe, I don't know, like they are trying to go, uh, trying to take the top top six spot in the standings. And, you know, you see some of the players injured because of all the playing times they, they had during the season. And who knows, possibly they're trying to fight for a play-in spot that you never know, right? So yeah. I think during those crunch times uh, in the season, now, I'm not saying the Raptors are destined to go deep in the playoffs, but I still feel like for their health and for their legs, for their knees, I feel like they need another a good, solid shooter or scorer off the bench. Yeah. No, I, I think that's a good point because if they are going to keep making this push, they can't sustain these type of minutes. And obviously, this is an anomaly with the game going into triple overtime, but mm-hmm. even before that, it was clear that you know, Boucher had a bad game compared to the way he's been playing. Precious had a good start, but then kind of started teetering off. And Banton is a very limited player uh, at this stage in his career. So Nurse just had no other options. And maybe he could have tried other guys, but it's, yeah, I agree that the fatigue thing right now, it's kind of okay. Fred took a few games off because to rest his knee. But if they want to actually make a push at one of these spots, they need definitely someone who's who's a little more reliable off the bench and 
It doesn't look like you're going to get that from Flynn or Banton this season. So, mm -hmm. and I think like getting that reliable player off the bench will help other players to play more. I think like because our bench players like Banton, Utah, uh, Chua Bushit are all good like defensive players, mm -hmm. but bench needs scoring. Like you need a shot creator, a bucket getter sure. from the bench. Like, like when do you ever see a six man of the year going to a defensive player? So, yeah, yeah I think overall, if they get a good reliable score off the bench, they'll open up for other players like Utah or Delano and Precious to make make plays or get buckets. Yeah, I agree with you. I think like they envisioned Flynn to be that player, but I've actually felt since Flynn came into the league that like he's best off as like a spark plug who can get his own bucket kind of like Lou Williams, but not so much run the team and get everyone else involved. He's always been more of a guy who looks for his own shot than his teammates shots. So I think you're right that if you get a guy who can create advantages, pass out of them, get got good guys, good looks, even a guy like Flynn, who is not known as a defensive player, more of a score, but even it could shift him into a better role as well. Um, so I'm, I'm with you there in terms of tonight's game. Uh, I mean, I want to just give a shout out to Jimmy Butler because that man is amazing. Like genuinely no one in the first half of that game, the heat just did not have it. And Jimmy kept like put them on his back and just kept them in it. And then in the second half and overtime, the Raptors made his life really difficult, but he kept getting into the paint, kept finding guys in the corner, PJ and Gabe Vincent shout out to him also just tearing us apart from those corners. And that was literally all Jimmy Butler. Even Bam had a bad game. Uh, but Jimmy, that was just a superstar performance from him. Uh, I want to let you wax poetic about Gary Trent Jr., who who uh, had his third 30-point game in a row tonight. And I know that you are a big fan of his. So, yeah, what have you liked about his game, not just today, but over the, over the past little bit? <laughs> when it comes to Trent, it's just making his shots. Like, we're not going to blame him for taking a crazy contested shot that he sometimes you know have confidence to take but it's more so of defense right i think his defense been amazing all season like it's like compared to last season or his time in portland yeah it's crazy how different the raptors coaching staff made um with his defense and like he got five steals today yeah you know and i know in overtime like i was almost thinking that he should have been off because he was clearly like very fatigued and yeah, his, yeah his legs were not working. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I think he just has to hit his shots and he is doing that, which led to him scoring 30 points three times in a row. Yeah. And I think when it comes to Gary, I think you just have to trust him to be efficient and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. He's been not... go for it. Yeah. So because I was because you're not going to like, expect him to be a playmaker or a good rebounder or a lockdown defender. You know, he's not like a lockdown defender. He's more of a flashy, um, you know, like in a passing lane, uh, getting, getting that ball. You saw him today getting the ball from Bam uh, in the transition. So, yeah, I think the way he's playing right now is, I think, at his peak, to be honest. Yeah, and the crazy thing is he's only like 22 or 23. Mm -hmm. so you're right uh, yeah the only the only thing now that raptors fans are like annoyed about is that the, is that the raptors didn't sign him longer term than beyond next season because he's he's looking like someone you would wish had a longer contract signed because he's just getting better and he's a good fit in the system and I, I think like you hit on it the biggest thing he adds is just that shot creation that not many guys on this team have and you could see the spacing difference between this game and then the games that the Raptors were playing when he was injured or when Fred was injured. As soon as you don't have both of those guys, this team becomes really, really light on shooting. And so mm -hmm. they, they're they so key for that reason. Yeah, um, that's why. Sorry, that's why because I think it, it maybe even getting a starting center will help the bench because you have to have – it's going to be either Gary or Scotty going off the bench if you have a yeah. starting center, right? Yeah. So maybe they'll help both starting lineup and the bench, but yeah, yeah, I'm not sure about just because there's not like there's not good a lot of good candidates to go for. I don't you, think you mean in terms of starting real, centers. Yeah, realistically, 
because I know like you mentioned Holmes and Miles Turner and um well Portal. Yeah, yeah, Jakob Portal. Yeah. Like they're obviously all great players, but I don't think realistically the Raptors are gonna get them this trade deadline. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you'd have to win the trade if the Raptors are gonna get them. They're not gonna like send out their whole future assets for one of those players, but I don't know. I've seen Masai win enough trades and I've also just seen kind of the reporting mm-hmm. around this. Like I, I think Turner is an interesting example because the the Pacers have made clear that they're going to trade one of those guys at the deadline, Sabonis or Turner. And then Turner gets this injury. And now it sounds like all these teams are shying away from them, him because uh, they don't want to send out a bunch of assets for a player who can't play right now. So I don't know. I feel like one of those guys could slip through the cracks, but you're right. Like there's, there's definitely a good chance that none of them get traded and I wouldn't be surprised either. But before we get off this game, uh, I want to just shout out. We already talked about Pascal and OG, but I'm looking at the box score, which isn't everything, but holy smokes, (laughs) Pascal, 13 rebounds, six assists, four steals and four blocks. Almost five by five. Yeah, almost. OG had three steals. You know, Scotty was also really good. I thought this game, he Mm -hmm. he comes and he goes a little bit as a rookie does. But he obviously, we should talk about those two free throws, right? That that he hit. I don't know about you, but I I did not have faith. How about you? Really? Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be mad if you missed is my yeah opinion. Yeah. No, me either. I, I think it's just <laughs> such a pressure situation, especially mm-hmm. I feel weird for the Raptors because they're going from playing in front of empty stadiums to playing in front of 20,000 fans like that must be a trip. And to be a rookie and to hit those two shots in front of all those fans cheering against you, like that just that just clarifies that he's he's, you know, he's him. He's he's really like one yeah. of those stars that has that that mental like mindset to be able to to stay focused in those moments. Yeah, I agree with you. And I agree with your tweet here. I think maybe this is the reason why he was able to hit those free throws because he was confident the whole game, aggressive and engaged, like you said. So maybe yeah. that helped to have him um, shooting the free throws in a clutch time with more confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Since we can't show clips, all we can do is show uh, <laughs> tweets. But yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't know if you can adjust that. But Let's give uh, our Can-Am tax man of the night to Gary Trent Jr. with oh, you in the background. Go. Yep. <laughs> uh, who joins Kawhi Leonard as the only Raptors with 35-5 and five in a game. Pretty cool. Pretty cool company for Gary Trent Jr. And yeah, his scoring was obviously really huge in a, in a game where I was saying to you earlier, in triple OT, this game ended 124 to 120. You know, we see a lot of games in the NBA end 124-120 in regulation. The, the Hornets put up 157 on the Pacers the other day in regulation. So the Raptors and the Heat are just such like 90s teams. And honestly, I love games like this. They're really entertaining to watch. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the tactical stuff on the defensive end is just so fun to watch between these two coaches and uh, and these players just digging in. And even though you see that their legs are jelly, just, just giving <laughs> Matt, like Pascal diving on the floor to keep that loose ball in, uh, I think in first overtime was just a crazy play. And Gary Trent Jr. obviously was a big part of that. So Gary Trent Jr., our tax man of the night. Um, visit canamtax.com for all your taxing needs. You can call VJ Verma at the top of our screen. And um, yeah, tax season is coming up right around the corner for 2021. And you don't want to do your taxes on TurboTax or try to do it alone. For free because you're never going to get back money if you do it that way. So just visit canamtax.com and they'll help you get back the money you deserve. Yeah. All right. Um, so before we go here, I don't know if there's any questions. Um, I'll ask our audience for questions. Here, uh, do you agree with this? No. He's not a lock. I, I think he should be, but I was listening to the Low Post recently and they were picking their all-star ballots. And there's a lot of... I would say there's a lot of players in the East who are bunched right up in that area and Pascal is one of them, but it sounds like a lot of other guys are getting consideration, uh, including Miles Bridges, LaMelo Ball, guys like um, 
Allen. Jalen Brown. Yeah. Jalen Brown. Yeah. Allen. I, I, I think like Siakam has been better than Tatum this season, to be honest, but I don't know if he's a lock. What do you well, think? but I don't think I don't think Tatum or I don't think Jalen Brown's gonna make it over Tatum. No. Yeah. So but I'm saying Siakam should make it over both of them. Really? Yeah. I don't I well, maybe think even if I think that, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> Same. It's not yeah, happening. And all I you need Jared, to know, go for it. Yeah. No, go for it. Go for it. I was just gonna say all you need to know about how much Siakam is respected in the NBA is mm-hmm. the fact that he got calls for an offensive foul in triple overtime with 20 seconds left on Tyler Hero, and then they reviewed the call and he still got called for that bullshit foul on yeah. Tyler Hero. Like he does not get the respect that he, how good he is deserves, and I think part of that is just being in Toronto. Like I hate. I hate to be this fan, but it's true. Like the it Raptors is, yeah. are not respected like the Lakers or the Heat are. And part of it, I don't know what the other part of it is with Siakam, but yeah. I think it's the maybe the struggles that he had between the All Star yep. season and this season. Maybe kind of yeah. Made him yeah. made him disappear in the media. Yeah, I think you're right. I think a little too up and down for him to be considered like a superstar, but I also just think people don't watch the Raptors the way they watch the Heat and these other teams. And if you haven't been paying a very close eye on the Raptors, you will just hear a lot of Fred all-star buzz. And you'll, I don't know, you'll see Barnes is up there and OG's like, really, the Raptors have been carried by Fred and and Siakam this year really heavily. So Mm -hmm. um, I hope he gets that, that KD spot. I really do. And I think he has a pretty good chance. After a night like this, people definitely paid attention to this one, but by no means a lock. Mm-hmm. Definitely not a lock. Yeah. Yeah, no. I I thought that call on, on Pascal was worse even than the OG one because OG did kind of fall and then uh, P- Tucker pushed him as well. But, but Pascal, think... you reviewed it. If you're going to review yeah. it, get it right. I guess. But the OG one was so weird because... Even if it was a light push, like there's clearly an extent of arm from PJ, and the ref was like standing right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, that was weird to me. No, that, that's the thing. The, the arm was clearly extended. So I think you, mm-hmm. got, especially, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no problem. Yeah. I'm a six man <laughs> or 10 day contract, more like actually. Yeah. Um, I got a question here too. Sweet. I think we got this a lot actually. In the previous wrap up live, but yeah, I think this is a good question because wh- whenever we watch the Heat, this the exact same thing happened last game. I felt like the Raptors were the better team, but the Heat just have a few shot makers, whether it's Gabe Vincent or last game, it was really Tyler Hero who can make really difficult shots coming off the bench in some cases. And no matter how good the defense is, obviously, Jimmy's another guy who can do this. No matter how good the defense is, they just they just can't be stopped in certain situations and i think the raptors struggle to do that in the clutch they have way fewer players um do you want to go first on this one or you want me to uh you can go because it's hard for me to decide yeah between gary and fred i think yeah i would take maker fred i would take fred and the reason is exactly what you saw today like gary does it throughout the course of a game but he's a hot he's a little hot and cold Mm-hmm. where you know in the in this game you saw he took two pretty ill-advised right. shots in overtime and they both were air balls whereas fred had a bad game all game he struggled to shoot the ball and then in triple ot he hits two pretty much logo threes so i think when you combine the clutch factor with the just shot making I, or, or the difficulty i gotta say fred is fred better finisher right he's better finisher than gary trent right at the rim or just in general? Yeah, at the rim. Man, they're both pretty bad. But yeah, Fred, <laughs> I would say Fred's probably a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think Fred's the number one shot maker on the Raptors. Yeah, but I, I also think like Siakam has a case to be made. He just faces more pressure than those guys. More bodies converge on Siakam when he gets to the paint than Fred. Like we saw there was one play in the fourth quarter that Fred kind of looked like he passed up an open layup. Because teams don't really defend Fred for the rim. They they defend his pass because they know mm-hmm. that he doesn't like to finish layups. So uh, those guys are, are guarded pretty differently. And, and Pascal definitely faces 
I think Pascal, it's fair to say he's at the top of a scouting report when, when the teams play Raptors. Um, right. But I do think this season, Fred in the clutch has been their best shot maker. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, he was pretty ridiculous doing that. And the, the weird thing watching it is like, it was ridiculous the shots he hit in triple overtime. And yet at the same time, I like wasn't surprised at all. You know, mm-hmm. that logo three he takes and he makes we, we we're used to it by now this season. Exactly. We are even like when he has a bad shooting night, he'll always he's always still liable to hit one of those. All right. Um, yeah. Before we get out of here, any last thoughts you had on the game or on the trade deadline that you want to talk about? Uh. Yeah, like as mentioned, here here's an example. Because Raptors to start the fourth quarter, they insert bench players, right? And Miami goes zone, and mm-hmm. Raptors just couldn't do anything. Yeah. And as soon as the Raptors bring back the starters, he goes back to man to man, and this sums up Raptors' needs right now, like scoring off the yeah. bench, shooting, and, yeah, shooting, shooting too. So, yeah. like overall, I think we just need a one good scoring. Doesn't have to be a guard, I guess. A scoring um, versatile player, either off the bench or even to start. And I think this team will have a great future. Doesn't have to play 50 minutes a game. I don't want at the end of the season four players on top 12 minutes per game. I just I just don't think that's a healthy way to just <laughs> even play a season. I don't know. What about if they got a starting center? Do you not? think gary trent could be that player who comes off the bench you just think he's too good to to do that i just think that gary off the bench won't be as good like like we saw with norm and trent like i think he came off the bench for the first game this season and then he started to rest but he, he didn't play well yeah. that game and I, I know it's only a first game of the season but yeah at the same time you never know it's not he's in like a proven bench player and there's definitely a difference between starting and coming off the bench. And who knows, even if you get a starting player, maybe Scotty comes off the bench to be the facilitator and score. I, yeah. I don't know if that'll work as well as Gary, though. Yeah, I've seen this a lot, too. Aren't mm-hmm. you worried about bad shooting? And I think that's a valid point. And if you're worried about that, yeah, maybe you do bring Scotty to the bench. But I think... I just think long term, I can't imagine keeping Scotty on the bench, especially next season. Like he's he's too good. He's just like he's not he's not he's gonna play himself beyond the type of player who comes off a bench. And I think it's true though, if you move Gary to the bench, the the spacing, unless you're getting Miles Turner, who's really a three point shooter, unless you're getting a guy like that, yeah, you're gonna really struggle with the spacing, but I, I still don't I still would rather that than Barnes to the bench I think because yeah yeah I just think I think Barnes he's your guy who you're focusing on developing more than anything in in the Raptors and he can still come out early and then go play facilitator for the bench like like they've been doing but yeah the Raptors clearly have a hard decision to make because when we talk about these trades it is it is going to be hard to find a fit and and still keep all these other guys happy but yeah i think it's more realistic to get a guard than a big because like it's like this i think masai don't want to he doesn't want to change the scheme of uh, uh, uh like a play style the raptors have with all the good six nine seven three wingspan all that stuff yeah so i don't think yeah he's gonna bring a seven footer here but with uh with a good scoring guard i think this team can maybe make the playoffs for sure then who knows second round yeah my rebuttal to that would be though that if they got a seven footer they would still their length would go even up a notch you know like right now they're long across all these positions and it can look really good but if you get a seven foot in there it only bumps everyone up a peg in terms of defending the position they're defending is now lower on the totem pole, but they are the same size. So the Raptors would be even bigger in that sense. And like, I think, yeah, like this switch heavy run around scheme, the Raptors are actually getting a lot better at it as the season goes mm-hmm. on. They're also getting better at the transition offense as we saw in this game. Oh, yeah. So, so those two things are happening and they're good, but I think eventually might not be this trade deadline, but I think eventually to become 
a championship contender. They need that traditional center because in order in the playoffs, it's all about matchups. And I just think in order to be able to play different matchups and different styles, they need that guy right now. They can play one style and they're getting better at playing it. Mm-hmm. But I, I still think they eventually need more options, more versatility. Yeah, definitely. Because I think today was like anomaly with Bam Adebayo not able to dominate in the paint. But if we uh, meet him again soon, it might be a different story. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah. maybe we're maybe the, the Heat are a good matchup for us. I even think is a possibility. But when you look at a team like Philly with Embiid or even Vucevic, I right. think like those are different centers and they present different problems than Bam. <clears throat> yeah, maybe um, even Capella. Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure as a lob threat. Like yeah, it, it's mm-hmm. tough to stop him. But all right, yeah. As you guys can see, Raptors play four games in five days um coming up here and the teams are not easy ones i mean i'll be pretty curious actually to see the atlanta match up do you think the raptors match up well against them just in a general sense or say we played them in a play-in game which could happen like what do you think about their matchup against uh the hawks um well the way they're playing right now i think that's a good matchup because capella isn't really a, a offensive threat like you mentioned he's a lob threat but I think defensively, we can't kind of contain him as a seven-footer. Uh, and we just have to worry about Trey Young, right? So I think, yeah, I think we had a good matchup against Atlanta. I'll be confident to bet on the Raptors if they face in the playoffs. Yeah. Especially right now. Yeah. Trey, Trey is hard to keep in front of. So I don't know who their best option is. It Probably Fred. But even then, like, Trey can get past Fred. So... Yeah, your rotations have to be really good when you're playing the Hawks because he'll make the defense collapse pretty much whenever he wants to. I think like th- that's why, you know, that's why they were ultimately able to go on that run last season is because the matchups that they got were just pretty beneficial to Trey. And there was no one who could stay in front of him on the on the Sixers or the the Knicks. And I really think he's like the biggest matchup problem, like maybe in the in the east mm-hmm. but yeah so, yeah sorry i'm just looking at this no i, I saw this uh wait. wait maybe we shouldn't play clips though just scroll right. up a bit scroll <laughs> up a bit yeah there we go <laughs> but yeah man i we'll see what happens i was i was disappointed to to listen to some of these pods recently and not really see siakam's name get mentioned in all-star mm-hmm. stuff and I think the coaches have until Monday to submit their lists. So we'll see what happens. But I definitely think he has a good case. Yeah, I think he has a good case. But I think Eastern uh, front court is a lot, a lot yeah. tougher than West right now. So, yeah, it'll be hard. I know. Like, as soon as I saw that Andrew Wiggins was starting, I <laughs> I was like, God damn, the East is so much tougher than the West. Mm-hmm. Like. It's insane. You, you, you don't you don't hear that often. No, no, it's definitely been a changing of the guard this year. But uh, any last thoughts, Don, before we go? I'm just glad they won today. I Same. think, especially the schedule, as you saw for next week, it's it's a valuable win. Yeah, yeah, huge win for the Raptors. Really in, impressive, honestly, performance from their five starters who. Every single one of them made really key plays down the stretch of the fourth quarter and overtime, especially Siakam, OG on defense, Trent and Van Vliet hitting shots. And, I mean, as fans of, of this team, I would have to say we're pretty lucky to get to watch them every night because even though they're maybe not the most talented team in the league, they fight the hardest, and that's, like, not hyperbole. They really do. Mm-hmm. And yeah, another really impressive performance and one of the best games that I've seen in the regular season in quite a while. And man, sign me up for a playoff series between these two teams because yeah. even though my heart would have a, I would have to go to a merge twice at least, it would be worth it because it's such really? a. Fun and game. and you have to face Kyle Lowry. Oh man, I don't think I can oh, handle man. that. <laughs> I forgot about Kyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, is, this is true. This is the Heat on a second night of a back to back without Kyle Lowry. I'm just telling people the Heat's. I just put a bet in for the Heat's uh, odds to win the championship. Mm-hmm. It's like I think it's a, uh, I think it's like eight to one right now. It's 
not bad. It's not bad at all. Yeah, first Con- seed. Or it was a few days ago. Yeah, considering uh, they're still getting Kyle back. And they have a move to make at the deadline if they want to. I think uh, this this team is a legit, legit championship contender. And mm-hmm. the Raptors beat them. So, good on the Raptors. All right. This has been the wrap-up with Oren and Don. We'll be back here on Monday night uh, with some other people to break down the Raptors game against the Hawks. But yeah, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to our Twitch channel and Discord, uh, Raptors Republic, and we will post this video on YouTube as soon as we're done here. All right.